going on guys? Victor here and we are sending it to the Bahamas once again. We're making that 90 mile cross to Lakaya. I got Babe with me. We got Austin the man. This is What's his boat right here. Ken. Taylor. Taylor, which is Austin's girlfriend. And of course, Mike Cashman. Rock on brothers. Let's get it. So that thing's good. Oh, good. Seems good. Alright, I'm good. Alright, 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 alright. Good, good, good. How's your day going? Good day, bro. A lot of good people day. checking in today? Alright guys, we finally made it to the island. We are in Lukai right now. Uh, the boys are checking into customs. What you do is, this is a foreign country, the Bahamas, even though it is so close to Florida. So you gotta check in. And we're gonna do is, we're gonna drop some stuff off at the hotel, book it offshore, and get after these yellowfin tuna. Got flock number one, and we pulled up on two other boats, though. Throw the hook pilcher. I'm eight, I'm eight, I'm eight. Yeah, dude. This went right on me. First one. First one. Chunky. Oh, right there, right off the bow. Blackfin on. We already stopped it on 30 pound brakes. Oh, come on, man. We did not get the target species yesterday like we thought we would. We're getting after them again today. Uh, usually early in the morning, the birds don't fly as much. And what I mean by that is the sun just came up. They gotta find the tunas just like we're trying to find the tunas. This day is the more birds have found tuna by then, so that's why the later in the day, it just gets better and better. Oh, busting behind the boat. All right, well, Mike just pulled hook on one, probably the elephant. Going with the dead bait this time. How's that first yellowfin feel? I'm so happy. Was it everything you thought it was going to be? Oh, definitely. I was so freaking excited. They brawl, don't they? Oh, yeah. You guys, that was a big ass tuna, too. She whooped that thing's butt. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. Honestly, I got it to the boat a lot faster than uh, I thought I was going to. You did. Yeah. You kicked its ass. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> and you guys are probably wa wondering why a wild girl just came out there with a the bat. You have to do that because, as you guys saw in the last video, the meat gets burnt. The lactic acid builds up, and when the tuna sit on the deck there, that's not good for the meat. So you gotta dispatch them right away. You gotta knock them out. That's why we use the bat. Giant tuna on? Yeah, it's yeah. a giant. Get ready to throw something in the water. Oh, the real one? Yeah, oh yeah, the real one, dude. Hey, giant. Go. Mike, with the money gap shot, let's go. Oh my god. Real? Keep him pin. Real? Real? Keep him pinwheel. Real? One more. Oh. One, more. Oh. one more circle. 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 Oh, nice one! 
Oh, that's a gas shot though, right? Jeez. You got lucky with that one. Get it. Oh. Oh. Right in the corner. That was uh, a group effort. It's a group effort. Yeah. You guys thought it got shocked effort. a couple times, didn't you? Yeah. Thing's huge. What do you mean? Oh, hey, this is giant. Wait, hold on. Your biggest one? Maybe. This one's bigger than my last. Yeah, for sure. We got followers. Oh my god, you got in right there! Rook got the in right there! So here's where we're at. We got a dilemma. We just caught two yellow fins, a couple black fins off of this flock. You see stuff busting every once in a while, but we don't know if we should stay or we should go. We haven't had a hit in a long time. And that's the thing with this type of fishery is these tuna stay so deep and you don't know where they are. Sometimes they come in your slick, sometimes they go out. You don't know how much time you need to invest in the flock of birds. The flock's gone, so we're gonna try to find another one. Oh, we, I just saw a bust right there, but we're not getting any hits and we all have baits out. So see you guys at the next spot. What you doing, Taylor? So we're cutting up these sardines, and then when we get on a flock of birds, we start chumming for them, and then throw some live baits in, and hopefully that they start smelling the dead baits, and then they'll eat the live baits. And you cut them into thirds. You don't want to overfeed the tuna. You just do, you know, nice little chunks like this. Just get a good stream going. Bail out all the chunks around the flock, and then you, when you stop the boat, you start a little one, two, three, four chunks, you know, at a time, and they follow you right up to the boat. Because if you do too much, then they're just gonna stay they're back. Gonna they're gonna stay deep. You want them yeah. to come up eventually. You got to cut them off. You got to cut off their food supply and then put it back in the water and then they come up. <laughs> Sharks are pretty bad right now. They're eating all our chunks and Austin just hooked one. But it's actually a good thing because if we hook this one, they might get spooked. Once you hook them once or twice and then they'll leave you alone. But if there's sharks here, that means there's tunas here. They always follow the tuna. This thing's hooked right in the corner of the mouth. It's moving. Big old thing. <laughs> Punish you. Oh, he's gone. She gone. Hey, yeah, my knot held. Hey. Gotta give it to you. That's a good knot. <laughs> not bad, right? You're not even safe, dog. Right? What you got, Vic? Why is that guy? Oh, uh, we got the uh, man in the brown suit. Didn't pay my taxes this year, so Shark came to pay, take him for me. Austin, Austin had one on. We got him both side. This one looks like he's been hooked before because he just, he won't even fight. He's just kind of just chilling there. He knows the deal. He knows he'll break off eventually. Austin caught a shark, Victor caught a shark. As you guys see, we're no longer in the Bahamas, but I'm chilling here with Mr. Yellowfin Tuna, the target species. When we go over there this time of year, that's what we're targeting. We're chunking. You guys saw that. I didn't get one. I got one on my last trip over, but Brooke got her first one, and I'm stoked for her. What'd you think? Yellowfin Tuna fishing is a lot of work. I was not expecting that. We were constantly running. We were constantly moving. We were constantly looking for birds, but it was so much fun and definitely worth it. Yeah. This thing was awesome. They fight. They Amazing. fight like nothing else. Seeing that thing come up on the surface and just do circles around the boat, which is amazing all lit up and yellow yeah. and just look at these sickle fins i mean they really are just beautiful f beautiful fish um these big yellow fins you got yellow fins right there hence the name yellow fin tuna and uh austin and crew if you guys are watching big shout out to you guys because without you this fish wouldn't be possible this tuna fishing like brooke said it's a lot of work and it's a huge team effort i'm not going to flay this up but i'm going to do a catch clean cook with this guy brooke's going to flay him up so if you guys want to watch that video it'll be linked in the description box below let's get to cutting this guy up All right, guys, Brooke just filleted this tuna, which you did a very good job, babe, by the way. Um, she's Thank on the you. second <laughs> half now, and we just cut open its stomach, and I always love looking in the contents of the stomach because, it, you know, it gives you a different perspective as a fisherman to see what your fish are eating, and check this out. You got some sargasm seaweed in here right there, and what they'll do is those tunas are constantly busting on stuff all day long, and a lot of times the bait will hide in that weed as, you know, kind of refuge. 
So when they go for a big gulp of a bait fish or whatever, they will get some of that seaweed in there. But we found all sorts of stuff. Check this out. You got a crab in there. It looked like what was a trigger fish, a smaller trigger fish. And then these are our live pilchards. Those were the chummers that we were throwing out. So he ate this and he had two chunks in his stomach too. Those are about the size of the chunks that we use when we're trying to chum up the tuna. So, oh, and the most wild thing in this guy was this right here. What is it? Plastic. I don't know what it is. I broke it out when I was taking it out, but I'm not it's, sure what it is. It's wild. It, he must have come up and either he thought it was something or it was attached to something, but there was plastic in that tuna yeah. stomach, which was wild. All right, guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Another voiceover and another sushi night. So I'm going to jump right into it. And the first thing we're going to be making is homemade eel sauce. Eel sauce is something you see a lot in sushi joints, and it is actually really easy to make. And it's composed of three things, soy sauce, mirin, sugar, and then you can also add a little bit of cornstarch if you want to thicken it up, which in my case I did. I mixed a little bit of cornstarch with some cold water. You bring your soy, mirin, and sugar up to a boil, and the whole thing with that is you just have to make sure it's equal ratio, so you can do one cup to one cup to one cup. Now we're moving on to make a spicy mayonnaise. Also very, very uh, popular for sushi rolls in poke and a bunch of different stuff. So all it is is sriracha mixed with some just traditional full fat mayonnaise. Very, very easy to make. You can make it as spicy or not spicy as you like. And I find it easier, especially for nights like this, to pour things in plastic bottles. Now you guys saw my eel sauce was not as thick as I wanted it as I usually do, but to get it as thick as possible, I'd boil it for a little bit longer. So now uh, cucumber, scallions, avocados are like the trifecta veggies for any sushi night, sashimi. Um, they just pair so well with raw fish. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm prepping all my ingredients first. We've got a bunch of scallions being chopped up into a nice big stainless steel mixing bowl as, long, as well as some avocado. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna be making some poke and I'm making these little cucumber sliced sushi just a variation of sushi and so I'm just trying to get everything into little bite-sized pieces and to really just get all my prep work out of the way and I did mix a bunch of this together because I do like those three flavors in almost any combination of sushi I make. So for these cucumber slices that I'm talking to you guys about I went ahead and cut these not too thin because I'm gonna be topping them with what you see here this is the elephant tuna and as you guys see it is not as red as I'd like it to be and as you're probably used to because I don't know what's going on, but the last few times we've been over to the Bahamas, I think we need to flay our fish either the same day we catch them, or I don't know what's going on, but they're not being iced properly. And one reason you did see us beat those fish with the bat was to dispatch them and to kill them as fast as possible so that lactic acid doesn't build up because that's what turns that meat white. So I have my uh, tuna chopped up into much little pieces. I'm making some um, spicy tuna for Brooke to put in her spicy tuna rolls, which she's actually making on the other end of the kitchen. And here are my cucumber slices just being uh, you know, I'm, I'm dishing them out on a nice wooden cutting board. I have some black and white sesame seeds, a mixture going together with my tuna as well as some avocado. I'm going to put some soy sauce in here as well as sesame oil, a real good potent sesame oil. Not too much because this is very strong, but you don't want a light flavored one. At least I don't. And see how good this looks? I mean, that's what sushi is all about is just getting creative, getting, you know, thinking outside the box and just getting all these flavors to come together. So I topped my cucumber slices with there. Now to make some poke, I added some cucumber, uh, scallion, avocado, Brooke made some seared tuna. We just got the works. We got a bunch of different stuff going on, had a bunch of people over, it was a great time. My cucumber slices, some with spicy mayo, some without. A poke bowl already mixed with the rice. A bunch of different sushi rolls that Brooke made. Thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed. All right, guys, so you see our epic sushi party. Brooke and I did work in the kitchen. We told everyone to be here at 7.30. It is currently 9.45, so we're a little bit off on the timing, but what did you guys think overall? It was pretty good. Amazing. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> 12 out of 10. 
<laughs> Equivalent, if not better, than sushi restaurant. <laughs> Fresher. Definitely better. Oh, it's better. For sure. It's better. But my real question is, do we have any to-go boxes? <laughs> <laughs> there we go, I like that one. <laughs> I would say everything was just delicious. As you can see, my plate is empty. I just got a chip left, but... <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard it. Thank you so much for watching this video, and this is the ending of the Yellowfin video from the first day in the Bahamas. I'll be seeing all you guys my land sharks in that next video. That's where you guys all say bye. Oh, bye. bye.